Greetings, this is Jim. Welcome to Saw Logs Plastic Hubs, and I hope you enjoyed the first part of this video if I haven't decided to split it. To quick recap, we're finishing this spade drill holder that I made up out of basically cold roll steel to put these spade drills in. Anthony Brown at Ragsdale Creek Workshop sent me these spade drills in a care package a while back. Uh, you haven't seen this, you may, may or may not see the slot for this. Okay, with that being said, I hope you enjoy today's video. Don't laugh too hard at my mistakes and whatever I do. Uh, even though I'm professional, I'm still capable of goofing up. So, uh, sit back, enjoy, get your easy chair, prop your feet up, or peek over my shoulder. Let's all have some fun. We're going to have a little fun in the shop. With all that being said, hey, let's get to slinging some more steel and get this thing finished up for you. Have a good one. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay, now we've figured all this out. We're going to center drill this thing. I've got all the... I figured it out, leveled it up, laid it out, squared it up. All the good stuff I need to do here. And now we're going to set up a center drill. That we're going to drill it. We're going to run this thing a quarter 28, actually. The main reason we're doing quarter 28, folks, is I've got quarter 28. Um, uh, quarter 28 drills and taps handy, so that's why I'm using quarter 28 instead of quarter 20. I've got a good many, and we'll have to do a little bit of work to get this to work, so. This is the clearance drill. And we're going to counter it. All right. Now we'll set up the counter sink. Okay, now we're going to do the counter sinking. Sink. I'm going to have a little bit of screw head sticking out and I may have to work on the screw. Let's try to tap this thing. Uh, see what happens. We'll take it over to the bench and see if how it's going to go together. There's got to be a lot of adjustments made to the screw. Okay, now we massaged this a little bit. But see, that's where we're at now. So now we've got this mounted really secure. So now the next step will be to go ahead and to uh, get this thing. Basically, this is this clearance, and that's all that matters. And so I could have actually left this to full size out here, and but I really wanted to do it a little differently for step purposes. So. Alright, so here we go. Now I've got to the next step, we're going to put it back in the lathe and we're going to work on cutting the Morris taper. That's the next setup. What I've done is I've basically taken a drill and putting it in there and using it as an indicational tool. So you see I'm close right now, I'm in about a couple of thousand. So I'm, I'm going to have to adjust it just a little bit more. To get it to where I want it. I'm really close, so 
I might just let that go because it's hard to get this perfect, but we may work on it some more. All right, there you go. Now you can see I'm pretty much on it, and it's pretty close. That's as close as I'm going to work with it anyway. So I think in that much I'll be able to hit a grab. That's all that's important. Okay, now what I've done, and you notice I've got my hard jaws on. You'll also notice this part's got a blue mark. I don't know if you can see it on camera right here. That blue mark corresponds to my number one jaw, the center of it. So that's going to allow me to line this thing up always in the same place. The reason that I'm going to do it this way is we still got to mill the flats on this. But it would be a lot simpler and easier and not, I'm, I'm a little out of position. Let me move it this time. So that line's got to be right in the center of the number one jaw. Alright. Just to show you, see how that looks. It's pretty true. I mean, it's not perfect. Now I just got to set my stroke lengths up. So basically, what I'm going to do is do that. Okay, now we're ready to make this is going to be like the first cut. And um, this drill is a little bit faster than my other one. The other one seems like it's not going to be a good battery boy today. Okay, so, I may have to hand feed it because this battery is not cooperating. Let me see if my other drill is going on. This is the very last pass. <clears throat> what I'm doing is I've measured a, a tool. It's always, and what the difficult part of this is, it'd be nice if you could just drip, dial the speed up on these drills. And dial your speed up the way you wanted it. And then you could just push the button, not having to try to manage the button, but it's not as easy as it looks. I know one thing, the uh, changing this over and putting a swivel in it like Yuchi did is a big help. And uh, if you haven't seen the video where I modified my driver to put the uh, socket and swivel in it, you need to see it. But, Again, I want to thank you, Tim, for the idea because that sure does make life a lot easier. For me, almost it's easier to put a hand on it and feel it so I can kind of control the speed that way. What I'm doing is measuring the end of it, the power calipers, because you really just need it to lock up. And without a taper gauge and a mic and all that stuff, these are always sort of an approximate anyway. I've made several of them. As long as you get them, you know, I'm a fairly close to the angle, so it's going to lock. But... All right, let's check the size on that. I'm looking for right here at the edge, about 810 thousandths is what I've measured. So. I'm right on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed it up and I'm going to polish it. We'll set up and do that. This drill tends to work a little better, so hopefully I can get enough battery out of it to, to do my job. It just takes a little bit of work. I'll bring you back when we get close. Right, what I did is I turned the little release on it. And I'm going to make this nice and speed it up a little bit. And so 240 and make it shiny. And uh, just kind of slick it up a little bit. Maybe to hit it with just a little bit of stock strike just to get it to 
Here's what we want him to do. Now, once I get this one built, I'm going to build several more, but they'll all be built off camera. But, and this is my prototype, and the rest of them probably you'll see them in one of my swap in the shops or something like that. Let me get me a piece of scotch bright. I'll be right back. We're going to hit it with this little scotch bright. Let's see if we can get the rest of it slick looking. Then we're going to give it a fit and see how it fits. That in the tailstock, and I don't want to get the tripod out. You can just see right there it is, and it fits good and tight. So that's going to be just fine. So now we only got one more step to do, and just to show you, it does knock out, knocks right out. So I think that's going to hold pretty good. So we're going to leave it be, and now off to the mill again. Okay, now we're going to try, we're going to make the first cut here. Now this is going to be relief back to, this is going to be relief back to the, uh, um, for the chips. And what I'm doing, is I'm just taking a 3 8 end mill, And I'm just milling a slot. And we're going to go back somewhere about like two inches or so, two to three inches, and say that's going to be good enough. We know our tapers are about right here, so. We done this last, believe it or not, because of needing this to be round to chuck up. So this is the last operation, and this is the first of the two. So I'm gonna go three inches. I think that's gonna be sufficient. Or two and a half. I think two and a half is gonna be the number. One down, we'll get the other. I've never drilled with a spade drill. We're going to try her out. That's 200 RPM. We'll see if it works. This is just a piece of mild steel. It's already got a hole in it. Let's just see what happens when we go in there with it. Might be a little fast, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. This is a thin piece of material, by the way. I just grabbed it up and lay it on the blade. We're going to see how it works.
little bit too fast, I believe. I believe we could use a little slower speed. I don't like the color of those chips. But 200, there's not a lot of drop off on this lathe. The only other speed is something like 70. I think that's a 2764 hole. We just okay. Thanks for coming by and watching part two. We've got this thing done now. So with all being said and done, you always always like to have to throw the <coughs> disclaimer in. This video is a copyrighted production of James Deadman. Saw logs, plastic hubs for your entertainment, enjoyment, and education here on YouTube. Probably more, probably more entertainment, but that's beside the point. So, with that being said, I want to thank you for sticking with me and watching this particular series of videos and the project. It means a lot to me when you do that. Uh, I like for you when you open the video up if you haven't to change that subscribe. You know, if it's red like my shirt. That means you're not a member of the family. How about clicking on it right quick and being a subscriber? I'd appreciate it. There's no financial obligation. Your email will not be sold and you will not get junk emails. Your phone number is not compromised and you're not getting some bunch of idiots trying to sell you insurance, extended warranty, or whatever else they try to hoodoo you out of nowadays. Um, that don't happen for being a subscriber to Saw Logs Plastic Hubs neither. Also, hey, how about making a comment? As I say a lot of times, us smaller YouTube creators, uh, we don't get out and about to the events like some of the larger guys. Financial, financial obligations kind of hold a lot of us back and, and uh, not complaining, it's just part of life. You're watching this video, you probably understand that yourself. But if you make a comment, I'll get back with you. So one good way to interact I do appreciate the people who do comment on my videos. With all that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's presentation of the making this up. I want to thank Anthony Brown one more time for the, for the blades. And uh, we'll see you on that next video. Have a great day.